I know optimization sounds boring, but it's important. If you want your game to run properly, you need to keep some of these things in mind. Starting with your events. So here we have the event for the bounce pad. And what the engine is doing every frame is checking these conditions. But it only checks the condition below if the one above it is true. Which means if we're just walking around, and we're not in collision with one of those objects, then we're only checking one condition every frame. But we have a set of events here that all use the same condition. So even if we're not in collision with that object, we're running that collision check four different times. So to optimize this, we're going to add one event up top that has that collision condition in it. And then all of these existing events will be turned into sub-events and then delete all of their checks for collisions. So now, instead of checking the conditions for four different events, we're just checking one. And then if the player is in collision with one of those objects, only then will it check the other conditions. So as you're building your game, try to think about where you can add subconditions and combine events to reduce the number of checks the user's computer has to make. And keep in mind that this collision check isn't just checking one thing. It's checking whether the player object is in collision with every other object of that type. And if you had two player objects, that would be twice as many checks for a single condition. And then the last thing for events is that the collision condition is actually pretty intense. So use it sparingly. If you can get away with doing something else, do that. Like in this game, to pick up points, instead of using a collision, I'm using distance between two points. So when the point gets within a certain distance of the player, it picks it up. So keep that in mind. The next thing that'll impact your performance are the actual objects in your game. So if you have lots of objects that are moving around or are doing something, it's going to be more intense than a bunch of static objects that are just sitting there. Here's a quick test. Every time I click, it's going to spawn a thousand green bunnies, and they're going to move around the screen and be animated. And if I do this, I can get up to about 25,000 objects before my FPS drops down to about 20. But if I get rid of the event that's moving those bunnies and stop the looping animation, I can get all the way up to 41,000 objects in scene before I get to that same 20 FPS mark. So just be mindful of what's happening in your game, what's moving, what's using events, and things like that. It's also really important to delete or deactivate behaviors on objects that are out of the screen. So if you're making a bullet hell and your bullets leave the screen and there's no chance of them finding the player again, then there's no point of them being there. They're just slowing down your game. So try to delete bullets once they've gotten out of screen. And if you don't know how to do that, there's an extension that you can install that will let you check whether an object is still on screen or not. Next for the objects themselves is the size of those objects. Be reasonable with the size. Check out the example games in the engine, and you'll see what those games use for the background and the area pieces and the character themselves. Also, you can look up common screen resolutions, pick the one you want to work with, and then don't make any objects bigger than the scene itself. You don't need a background image that's 7,000 pixels by 7,000 pixels. For mobile games, for example, there's really no reason to go beyond 720p. And the final thing for objects in scene is that if you have a giant game scene with lots of little objects, it's better for performance to use tile maps. And it will also be easier to do. And the last section here can actually affect whether or not your game will be allowed on game stores. And that's your file size. Like itch.io, where if your zip file has over a thousand files in it, it won't be allowed as a web game. And just more generally, if your game files are huge, it's going to take forever to download or load in browser. So for the number of files in your game, there's a quick fix. If you were just carelessly adding objects to your game, and they're just in your game file but not actually being used for the game itself, you can go to resources, right click on any object, go to remove unused, and click on one of the file types, and it will remove all of those from the project. Then you can create a new folder, 
and save it inside of that new folder. And you'll have a new folder with just what's in your game. For large images, you can just Google how to compress those. But the next biggest culprit are audio files. For short audio files like sound effects, the .wav format is fine. But you'll want to use AAC for anything longer, like a music file or ambient noise. Because those kinds of files are the ones you'll see the real difference with. And now that you know this, you can go work on your own game, or keep learning with the intermediate tutorials. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more GDevelop related content.